morning guys welcome back to my channel it's about 10 30 in the morning and i am getting ready to go to my glucose tolerance test i'm gonna take you guys with me and then i'm gonna do a full second trimester update let's get going so i just got to the lab to get my glucose screening done and because of covid they have to text you to let you know when you are clear to come in but i've got my mask and i have not eaten since six last night so i am so hungry and i really want coffee so i really can't wait for this to be over with well that was an experience um the lady who was doing the screening test did not realize I was getting the screening test and she thought I was just getting my blood drawn. So she took three vials of my blood and then said, have a nice day. And I looked at her and I was like, um, I'm supposed to be getting the glucose tolerance test too. And she was like, no, see, look right here. It says that you're supposed to get the Tdap vaccine, but we don't do vaccines here. And so then I was like, oh, well, my doctor did put an order in and um, she was really nice, but I was like, oh, no, I don't think that's right. And so she looked closer at the paper that my doctor sent and was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to prick you again. <laughs> So I got my little bandage on my arm, but I drank the drink and it was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it tasted like a soda, but it could be because I'm really hungry and anything is good at this point. But now I have this fancy little pager that they said, take this and we will buzz you when it's time for you to come back in and get your blood redrawn. So now we wait. So it's been about 45 minutes and I really have to be. I'm struggling, but I'm excited because I've got like 15 minutes to go before they check my blood again and then I can eat. And I think we're gonna get Starbucks because I need coffee, a small coffee, but still need coffee and then lunch so that will be fun but we are almost done okay so i just got blood drawn in my other arm and they said that the doctor will get my results in three to five days so now you just wait for those but i'm very happy because we get to get food now and i'm starving i did notice that when i stood up and walked into the hallway i felt pretty lightheaded so I feel like they took a lot of blood today, but well, hopefully there are good results. So here's a little bump update. I am in the last week of my second trimester and I am 27 weeks today. Something that I always look forward to when I reach a new week in pregnancy is looking to see how big the baby is and all of the little milestones that he has reached this week. So for example, Ovia is one of the apps I use and it says today he is 27 weeks. He is the size of a bunch of bananas. He also just reached a viability milestone with his lung development, which is really cool. And let's see, his little hand is that size and his foot is that size. I think that's probably my favorite part about this app is seeing his hand and foot. So if you are pregnant or you're planning to become pregnant, I highly recommend downloading any of the pregnancy apps. They are wonderful because you're able to track your baby's development your whole pregnancy. And I think that is so special. Now let's talk second trimester symptoms. I actually have had a very smooth pregnancy and I feel very fortunate to not have been extremely sick or in a lot of pain. But when I went to my 14 week scan at the high risk OB, they did tell me that they noticed I had marginal placenta previa and put me on pelvic rest. Prior to that, I had been working out four to five days a week and had been very, I wouldn't say extremely active, but I was definitely pretty active. And I was so bummed because I was really enjoying getting to work out each morning and it made me feel really good and strong. But I listened to the doctor, went on full pelvic rest for, I would say about a month. 
and by my anatomy scan everything had actually cleared up and my placenta had moved up which was wonderful news i was very thankful to hear that other than the placenta previa i have experienced some more nausea in this trimester i actually found that i started out this trimester more nauseous than i was in my first trimester which i found kind of strange actually the day of my anatomy scan that morning I told my husband i was like i feel like i'm going to throw up it could have been nerves too because that is a nerve-wracking appointment i had no idea why i felt so sick i was already at that 20 week milestone i didn't understand i thought the nausea was supposed to be done at that point but i found out it can be worse for some people in the second trimester so that is something I did not expect. So if you are in your first trimester and you have no sickness, I don't want to scare you, but there is a chance that you could potentially be a little bit nauseous in the second trimester too. Or you might have no nausea and that would be amazing. Other than nausea, I have had a little bit of pregnancy insomnia. Not every night, thankfully, but there are some nights where I definitely have a hard time sleeping. And one night I actually wrote out everything that I planned to bring in my hospital bag. I was up for like three or four hours that night. It was a long night. I just felt like I had so much I needed to do. And being pregnant in this pandemic makes you feel really like you can't get things done in a timely manner. And so that night I literally made a full list of what I wanna bring in my hospital bag. And I told my husband the next morning about it and he pretty much looked at me like I was crazy. It made me feel better. Other than the pregnancy insomnia, nausea, heartburn has definitely been a big one for me. Um, it's come and gone a little bit. It's definitely one of the symptoms that has really stuck around most of my second trimester. I would say some Braxton Hicks. Definitely in the evening is when I would get Braxton Hicks more often than not, um, but they're not terribly painful. They're just, I would say at the worst, they're mildly uncomfortable. And what it feels like is your stomach is just tightening. And so the first time I experienced it was so strange. I had no idea what it was, kind of scared me. But now if I'm looking at my belly when I'm having a Braxton Hicks contraction, you can actually see like one side of your belly like tighten up. It is insane to watch. A big milestone for the baby is he actually had hiccups during this trimester. So it feels so strange. I didn't know what it would feel like and I wondered how am I gonna know if, he's ha if he has hiccups? You know, because typically his movements are a lot bigger now. And so if he kicks me, I can tell he's kicking me. But what the hiccups feel like is like a little flutter. The flutter that you felt at the beginning of this trimester when you start to feel them moving around, it's like that, but it's like a consistent flutter. And I told my husband, I was like, I feel so bad for him. I know what, when I have hiccups, I hate it. And so I just picture him getting so frustrated in there like, oh, stupid hiccups. But those are pretty much all of my symptoms that I have experienced this trimester. Just to figure out who you are, and because we're in a pandemic, my husband has not been able to attend any of my appointments. And so he actually drives me and he waits in the car outside, which is nice to have that moral support. But it's been really sad because he can't listen to the heartbeat at the doctor appointments. He can't be at the ultrasounds. I was completely alone at the anatomy scan and they don't allow you to film or they at, le at least they did not allow me to film my ultrasounds. And so it was really sad, but a private ultrasound place opened up again after being closed because of COVID-19. I was able to make an appointment because after I found out that my husband wasn't able to be at my anatomy scan, I was devastated. In fact, he actually came into the room and I was just sitting there bawling and he asked me what was wrong and I explained that they said that I have to come alone to the anatomy scan and I was very nervous about it, especially because I didn't know how the placenta previa was. I was just very nervous and did not wanna to go to this alone. And he assured me it would be okay and then we looked into places where we can go get an ultrasound done privately so he can be with me. We did find a place and it's local to us. I know that there are probably a lot of private ultrasound places that are local to you guys, 
but we were very excited because we set our appointment and it was for a month, actually literally a month to the day after my anatomy scan is when our 3D ultrasound appointment was set. I was so excited for that appointment because up till this point, you don't really see the baby's face. You just see their little side profile. At my anatomy scan, he was so active and he was super difficult. And I felt really bad for that tech because she was having a hard time and they have to get every single organ during that scan. And he was not giving her an easy time. And so I think that sometimes they do 3D ultrasounds there at that place I was getting my anatomy scan done at. But fast forward to a month later and my husband and I got to go to this private ultrasound place and it was so nice. We wore masks, everyone, it was very sanitary. Um, the people were super, super friendly and they were worried actually because they looked at my belly and they were like, is he far enough along for us to get 3D photos like this? And we were actually doing the HD live option, which is I think where they have a light involved with the ultrasound wand. I was nervous because I was like, oh no. I actually messaged them and asked, am I gonna be far enough along? for the HD live option and they said I was. So I was crossing my fingers that it would work out. And first of all, I have to say it was amazing that my husband got to be there because he has not been able to be at any appointments and I don't foresee him being able to be at any appointments in the future for the remainder of this pregnancy. Him being there was so special because he got to see our little boy's face with me for the first time. We got to experience that together. It wasn't super easy at first because again, our baby did not want to cooperate. He actually had his feet over his head and was like covering his face with his toes or with his feet. And it was kind of funny until we realized he has to move them if we want to see his little face. So they had me shift all around. I actually had to go to the bathroom and try to like empty my bladder and see if that would help him move. But we actually ended up getting the most priceless ultrasound pictures of him. And I have to say that woman was so patient and she was just like, was doing everything she could for us so we could get those pictures of our baby. Especially because she knows that the people coming in aren't getting to go to their appointments with their significant others. And so they just gave the best service. But I was so excited because we got this little photo of him. This is one of our favorite pictures. And there actually are quite a few. They took so many and we will cherish them forever. And I can't wait to compare them to his little face when he's born. It just, it was so special. And I definitely recommend if you're not able to go to your appointments with your significant other, um, and you're currently pregnant during this pandemic, look into a private ultrasound option. It's it's a little bit more expensive because it's not covered by insurance, but it is definitely something that my husband and I are thankful we decided to do. And that is it for my second trimester update. Overall, it has been very smooth and I am so thankful. I'm very much looking forward to starting my third trimester next week because it means we are that much closer to meeting our baby boy. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment down below. And to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. Bye guys.